Hi, everyone, and welcome to Gervaina Barba Press's event, which is Portrait of an Artist and Poet. And I'm Gloria Minda, editor of Gervaina Barba Press, and we publish poetry, fiction, and translations. We are one of the busiest press, I think, in the country. I started Portrait of an Artist and Poet because it's like one of my favorite things to do. It's amazing how many poets and artists there are, there are out there. So I'm really excited to have Stephen um, here tonight. So let me say a few words about Stephen. He is a professor emeritus at Central Connecticut State University, is widely published fiction writer, poet, and painter, his novel, The Highway of Spirit and Bone, Lafora Publications, has just been published and is available on Amazon and at other sites. His newest book of poems, Life Field, will be published by Inspired Books this month, actually, and this year. And Chavana Barva Press also published Seen Unseen by Stephen with his son, Benjamin, and that was, what, 2018? So time flies geez so i would like to turn you over to stephen thank you gloria um i really appreciate uh you know being being part of the chavena barva family um and uh you really launched uh benjamin and i uh from from scene on scene we were able to get a full length book published and and do some some things with our poetry and it wouldn't have happened if it weren't for you. So thank you for that. Um, this, uh, this will be uh, a short and sweet, I think. Um, I, I don't know what to say about my paintings. Um, so maybe uh, if people have questions, they can ask them. I, I, I put a little uh, word document of, of I think 16 paintings and I'll just, I won't dwell on any of them, but, but I might say a word or two and go through each one. Um, and uh, then I'd like to just read some poems that are about painting and paintings. Um, and uh, that will do it. So how's that sound? It sound like, okay, uh, a plan? Okay. All right. Um, so now share screen. Here we go. Okay. Uh, I don't know what just happened. I got in, an invitation thing here. Susan, come to the rescue. <laughs> when I went to share screen, this came on. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, okay. All right. IT help in pajamas. <laughs> All right. That, yeah, great. It's, 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 okay. Is that visible now? Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, this is a, a recent painting. Um, it's called The Lovers. And I probably have painted four or five paintings called The Lovers. Um, you can see... Uh, there are there are figures, but they're not they're not naturally they're not realistic figures, but they suggest lovers. Um, uh, I like I like to mess around with color. Um, I like I like movement in my paintings, uh, at least some of them. Um, and uh, it's all it's all to me an experiment, uh, you know. Um, this painting, just like almost all my other paintings, if you were to X-ray them, they probably you'd probably see four or five different paintings underneath. Um, because I keep painting until I get something that I can live with. Um, sometimes I regret it and wish I could go back to the first thing because that was maybe the best of the of the five things. But you know, I stopped I stopped here because I I sort of uh, liked where I got with this one. So that's the lovers. This is an older painting. 
Um, this one's, you know, more kind of, I don't know, settled or something. It's still life with the paintings and flowers. Um, it was used as the cover art for a literary magazine. I can't remember what magazine. Uh, I've had I've had my my paintings used for the cover art of three or four magazines, uh, literary magazines, and and a lot of them have also been uh, uh, paired with other people's writings and stuff um, in within magazines. Um, so you know, here this is. I imagine this is a gallery or somebody's somebody's living space or something. Um, Anyway, uh, it hangs in my my wife's office, um, so it had some use. Uh, this painting is called, I couldn't get the words on there, but it's called uh, Holding Hands, They Sojourned Through the Night. And this was also a cover painting uh, for the most recent issue of Pensive magazine. Um, and uh, they just had a book launch and uh, it was very nice. It was at Northeastern University and uh, they asked me to speak about the painting. I, I didn't know what to say. So I read a poem instead, <laughs> which is which is <laughs> more my comfort zone. Um, but there you have it, you know, kind of a dark landscape and uh, a couple holding hands and uh, moving through the night. This one is called Northward in the Green Blue Sea of Night. Um, it's it's not a great photo of the painting, but um, uh, there, there are better ones that I couldn't find. Um, this was used as the cover for the very first edition of Lily Poetry Journal. Um, and I was just really thrilled when when they contacted me and said that my painting would be the on the cover of the inaugural issue. Okay. Um, my technician. Um, so that's that. Um, this one is called Cathedral. Um, I just got really into uh, various shades and uh, hues of blue. And um, if you look closely, there's a kind of uh, cathedral um, coming through and some, <clears throat> some, some people who are at prayer. Um, I was doing some, kind, some uh, scraping um, in this painting. Um, I don't know what else to say, so I'll move on. This is called uh, The Nurturers. Um, I made a series of paintings with uh, very white bare trees and uh, a single bird in, in the tree. I have I've made about five of them, and those have all sold very quickly. Uh, people seem to like them. Um, I was able to donate one to a uh, to a a cause that I that I liked, and and they raffled it off or something, and and made some money. So I'm very happy that that kind of thing happens. Anytime I sell a painting, by the way, I donate the money to to charities. We have a couple of. Uh, important charities to us that, that have to do with Haiti. And then uh, um, lately, there are some other charities that have come into my perspective that I, I also try to, you know, support in, in a small way. I, admit, I don't sell these things for great sums of money, but when I get any money for them, I like to put it to a good use. This one is called Mind Approaching Spirit. To me, this is one of my favorites. Um, I don't know how it goes over with other people, but this is my idea of myself as a painter. Um, I, I Again, because there's a lot of movement. Um, 
I see it as kind of a, a, a abstract portrayal of um, intellect and spirituality kind of coming together. Um, and that's that's the sweet spot for me. Uh, that's that's a sweet spot for me in my writing and it's a sweet spot for me in my in my painting. Um, so yeah, mind approaching spirit. This one, a friend of mine, a colleague of mine bought, um, it's just on paper, um, but um, it's called Just Off the Highway of Spirit and Bone. Um, and my novel is called The Highway of Spirit and Bone. Uh, I told the publishers that I, I would like to, I would like to paint the cover of the, of the novel, but they rejected all my my uh <laughs> thing so they got a they got a graphic designer and and the cover is is terrific i i like what they chose um but uh you know this one just i i kind of like this one even though it's you know you, it's transparently a painting um but i like the the thickness and and again the the kind of action of the sky um kind of surreal i have a thing for surreal surreal things this uh this i have about four or five sh paintings that are all called uh something near the end of time so this is seascape near the end of time i have landscape near the end of time cityscape near the end of time uh nightscape near the end of time and they're all kind of surreal images um and this one was uh, published in the uh, William and Mary Review, I think. Um, I think that was the one. Anyway, um, yeah. So it is what it is. I don't, I don't, I couldn't tell you what's going on in this painting, but um, it's near the end of time, I can tell you that. Um, this is called the, oops, didn't mean to do that. It was called The Painter at Her Easel. Um, lots of color. Um, it's probably hard to separate the painting she's making from the painting she is. Um, so it's kind of like a painting within a painting. Um, anyway. Yeah, uh, again, splashing the colors, playing with colors, seeing, seeing you know, the effects of uh, the juxtaposition of certain colors. Um, all of that is uh, part of my play. And it really, that's, that's what my painting is, is just playing. It's called Experiment Days. I told you... Uh, uh, Gloria told you, uh, she published Benjamin and I, um, uh, a book called Seen Unseen, a book of poems in which we kind of converse with each other in poetry. And we liked doing it so much uh, that we, you know, pursued it, wrote some more poems, got a full length uh, book of poems published as a, as a, a collaboration. And then uh, we started talking about uh, a second one and it was going to be called uh, Experiment Days. And so I started making a painting that I thought might be a good cover. Um, so that's what I came up with. It now hangs in Benjamin's new home in Rhode Island. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad it has a home with him and his wonderful wife, JC. And uh, yeah, um, you know, Again, what what's going on in the painting is uh, is up to anyone who looks at it and wants to kind of fill in the blanks. Um, but I do see a father and a son there on the road looking up, and uh, something's going on. This is called The Blue Window. This was also published in a literary magazine of that, that I can't recall. Um, 
the blue window uh, was bought by a colleague of mine who who really liked it, and uh, I was happy uh, that she liked it. And and um, it always makes me happy when people I know and and like or love uh, have some some of my work in their house uh, on a wall in their in their house. Uh, that's always a good feeling. This is called the dog walker, one moment before the idea that changed the world. Um, so I'm sorry I didn't capture the actual idea that changed the world. Um, that would have been nice to know in, in these dark times, but it's one moment before that. Um, um, and uh, this is going to be, oh, actually it is, the book has been published. This is the, the cover of a book um, by, um, Oh, I can't remember. Mark. Um, I can't remember his last name. I feel terrible. Um, Mark Frazier. Uh, you might be Facebook friends with some of some of you. Gloria, you may know the name. Um, Mark Frazier. Yeah. So this is the cover of his book, and I was, you know, honored that he asked uh, to uh, to use it as a cover. Always glad to to contribute covers to people's books. I, I think that's really fun. <clears throat> and, uh, and then he subsequently bought the painting and, uh, you know, made a donation to a, a good charity. This is more abstract and uh, even more abstract, I should say. It's called Yes, Yes, Yes. And I was just trying to be positive about life. And so I used bright colors and I put the word yes all over the painting and, um, you know, just just had fun with it. Um, I, I posted it on Facebook and it got an, a really big response, a little little bit surprising. Um, you never know what's going to what's going to appeal to people, I guess. Um, but this one really did. Um, the. Um, it, it it yeah somebody somebody reprinted it at, or reposted it on uh, Twitter and <clears throat> just yeah just had a nice little little life so and I haven't made no 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 yet uh, so hopefully that won't be <laughs> won't be forthcoming this is a painting I painted for my little grandson his name <laughs> his name is Beckett but I call him Boom Boom. And the painting is called Boom Boom. And he's called Boom Boom for good reason. Uh, if you got to know him, you'd, you'd know why. Um, but this is, this is a kind of, you know, indirect metaphorical way of trying to capture the spirit of Boom Boom, which is bright and energetic and beautiful and, and on the move and discovering things all the time. You know, you know how two-year-olds can be. Um, and and this is a, this is one of my biggest paintings actually, and uh, it hangs in Boom Boom's room, at, in my daughter and son-in-law's house, and so Boom Boom sees it every day. Hopefully someday he'll uh, <clears throat> he won't want to throw it out. Um, I hope he'll he'll keep it and remember his granddad when I'm long gone. Maybe the painting will stay with him somehow. So that's Boom Boom. Again, a lot of colors, a lot of um uh, images uh sort of uh asemic writing and and just uh i don't know i was just kind of uh, this is like boom boom this is like boom boom and just kind of letting it go in a free form uh my next book uh, full length book of poems is coming out in 2 weeks and this is the this is the cover it's called life field um, and it's also, it's from a painting I made, um, and I, I'm excited that, uh, I, uh, it's actually my first full length book of poems. I've got a lot of chat books and, a, a one collaborative book of poems with my son, as I said, this is the first full length book. Uh, and it's kind of, uh, you know, a pseudo autobiography, I guess you could say it alternates, uh, you know, lyric poems and prose poems. And uh, and that's 
that's it. That okay. So that's that's the paintings. I, I don't know if anybody wants has any questions or anything about the paintings before I read, or should should I just read a few poems, or how do you want to do this? Why don't you uh, read some poems and then we'll um, do questions after you're done? Okay. Is that all right? I, I see Margaret. You raised your hand. You, you, can you hold that thought? We can. I can always get this back up if you wanted to. You know, bring up a painting or something. Okay. So, um, all right, Sue. Now I want to stop. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. Um, I'm just going to read uh, five or six poems, I think, and and they're they're almost all very short. So. This first one is called To the Lighthouse. Um, <clears throat> living, living here on the shoreline, when you go past art galleries in almost any shoreline town, you see paintings of lighthouses and waves crashing and, and boats and things like that. I guess that's to be expected. Uh, so I wrote a poem about that. I, I, it, it's not meant to be mean spirited about those things, but it's 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 my re reaction to seeing those all the time in all the galleries and feeling it's a little tedious. This is called "To the Lighthouse." You may have known that I stole that uh, title from someone else, some obscure writer. Um, "To the Lighthouse." These shoreline galleries seem to think. Everyone wants paintings of crashing waves, sailboats listing, lighthouses intense in the sun. I would like to have a studio in a lighthouse. I would look out sometimes the whole day. I would not paint what I saw. I would paint what it feels like to see. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, the, uh, there's an art critic for New York magazine, um, who used a phrase in one of his, uh, in one of his, uh, um, uh, essays about a particular painter. Uh, and he said that, um, he liked this painting because it was stranger and more personal. And so I, I love that phrase, stranger and more personal. So I've written 98 poems with that title. Uh, <laughs> um, just I, I just wrote one every day for like three months. Um, and uh, I don't know what if it constitutes a book or, or whatever. I've got to I've got to polish them. But, but this is one um, that has a little a little to do with uh, with painting. So I'll read this one. Stranger and more personal, 13. My rocking chair faces the universe, writ small but swirling, two mallards in the spring swift stream. My thoughts can be like that. Seeking clarity, I read mystics and myths. At the easel, I paint awkward hieroglyphics that sooner or later shape into meaning. When my phone rings, I almost never answer it. Meeting obligations? My record is spotty. I'll tell you that I'll try, but I certainly won't promise. Some days I won't even try. Um, I don't know what that says about me, but I think it's <laughs> somewhat honest. Um, I published this book uh, called uh, After the Tape Modern, which is um, a book about uh, spending a day at the Tape Modern in London, and then uh, trying to describe not only the paintings, but the experience. It kind of had, it, I don't know, it, I may have been jet lagged, uh, I don't I don't recall but but it was a it was a very surreal kind of day for me you know just everything seemed hyper hyper real um 
And I went home and started writing uh, the poems in, in my hotel in London that, that night. Um, and wound up winning the Atlantic Road Poetry Prize, but uh, I think that the press um, uh, island verse editions, I think is no longer uh, publishing. So I think it's it's out of print. But the good news for me is that I, I put the entire, this entire, it's really one poem of uh, short sections into life field. So it's, it's, it's back in print in a way. And I'm just, I'm gonna read a few of the sections and then finish up with one last poem and that'll be it. This is the, the first page. A fragment of my eye falls into the Thames. The rest of me turns salmon in the strange sun. My lover's eyes are 3,500 miles deep. I saw her in a frame of Picasso, undoing, undoing, undoing a blue triangle until it was undone. I miss her like a limb. I swear to God, more than once I sensed the Holy Spirit smothered under paint, faith moaning in oil. Maybe we can't help it. We don't pray, don't believe, yet we pray. A finch no bigger than a plum, plum-colored, swooped out of a painting of a skull made of glass and flew into my mouth. From my tongue, it vaulted to my brain and perched on a dendritic wire of hot atoms. I thought, eat, make sounds, at all costs, survive. I found Pollock where he'd left me, still spilling his guts, spilling hieroglyphic warnings like schizoid semen, spilling nuclear inebriation. Spent, raging, bottle-handed, the hell with everything, he left me again. In front of Mondrian, awkward me suffered the knifey emotion my body invented on the spot. I texted my lover a picture of the top of my head, eyebrows, and all the hair swirlish as snakes. Surely she would miss me and send me her teary breasts. I floated onto the balcony to check on London, shards and parliaments, globes and riverboats, teams of souls summering on the South Bank, a little sexy, a little unsatisfied, as if each were a motion picture of a tender ego avoiding revelation. I was their projector. When I was young, when I was a young man, Marc Chagall saved me from gravity. I loved him for it. A thin bone guide brought over a group began to explain the more he explained, the more my love darkened. I thought that I only thought, shut up, shut up and look, but they all turned. Here I sprawl beside the river, a lost and eye broken fish wondering how. Those sheets of different colored air, the flags of geometry, the cathedral moods, the thick strokes to the heart, the urgent mouths of laughter. I don't mean their technique. I mean, who gave them their audacious permission? And I'll finish with, uh, with um, a prose poem. The Painter on the Road. You had to drive. You were like a comet in that way and each hour wrote its own book of revelations for you, and every sky was a landscape, and every hillside preened its hundred faces, desiring to impress you, turning this way and that in the rise or fall or shift of light. Reveal me, the real me, everything cried out. The trees, massed and fathomed, longed for your love 
as if it were you who conjured them for the reasonless glory of making. Alongside the dust and gravel road, the river rolled with you like a brush stroke, and it lifted glints of copper on its scalloped surface so that you'd go slow and gaze and love it for the sake of its shining. You had to drive, and so you did. And you looked out and canvassed the earth for keeping as it sprang into being like a streak of sun-soaked tiger lilies out roaring in a wild field. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. That was wonderful. Some of your, your lines, oh my gosh. And I love your paintings. Uh, thank you for sharing that, your work and your paintings with us. And I'm going to turn it back over to you in case anyone has any questions or comments they would like to make. Okay, thank you. And thanks for your kind words, Gloria, and for, you know, letting me do this. I, I really appreciate it. So um, do people like just unmute themselves if they want to ask anything or say something? Sure, that, that's fine. Um, let's have it very relaxed and um, because there's um, it, it'll be uh, easier for everyone. So sure. um, hey, I, uh, this is Linda. Um, I was listening Hi, to uh, uh, Colin McEnroe and he was talking about the art of reading out loud and silent reading. But I have to say, reading, hearing you uh, read your poems is so much more wonderful than reading them myself. Mm -hmm. So I just, I think that poetry is probably best, well, well, not best, but I don't know, for me, it's much nicer. So that's it. Well, thank you, Linda. Yeah, I, I know you said that before when you went to one of my readings and, and I, I can appreciate that. The, you know, you can you can stretch out a word or you can, you know, soften a word when you're when you're reading it yourself. But the, the, the words on the page have to do some work that maybe they they can't do as well. Margaret, did you? Yeah, I just have to ask. Uh, if you do nothing else, did I miss a signature on Boom Boom's painting? Oh, a signature. Please, for his sake, oh. 40 years oh. from now, yeah. <laughs> let there be a signature saying this was my grandfather. I will go, I will go back and do that. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, and, do, you, do you usually uh, sign, sign your pictures on the lower right? If I remember to. <laughs> sometimes That's I do and sometimes I don't. I, I, you know, if I know that someone's buying it um, or I'm donating it to a cause, then I generally remember to do that. And I put the title on the back, you know. Um, okay. But a lot of them that are just kind of piled up in the basement, <laughs> they don't have that. I hope Boom Booms does, but I will. I I go over there all the time, so I can. Well, I, I can... looked and looked and looked, and I just. Oh, couldn't... maybe not. Yeah, it's it's quite possible well, that. Please sign it and then put a special message for him on the back. Okay. <laughs> well, he God knows he is a special kid to us. I mean, so you're you're absolutely right. Thank Are you. Your for only that. grandchild. Yes, yeah, so far. <laughs> so far, we got other kids who are capable of. Producing more, so we'll see. <laughs> PG, can you? I just loved your paintings, um, and I really liked hearing you, ex you know, say things about them. So I can't wait to share this with the artist friend of mine because it will be on YouTube, right, Gloria? <laughs> so, oh, so that'd yes. be good because I, my first instinct was to call her and say get on Zoom, but I thought, oh, she'll be able to see it when I send her the link. But um, so how often do you paint? I paint, I paint, I, my routine, I'm retired, which is wonderful. Um, my routine is to uh, write in the morning and then uh, usually go for a walk or something. I like naps and then <laughs> I paint, uh, you know, in the afternoon, late afternoon, sometimes in the evening, um, but pretty much I'd say four or five days a week. 
sometimes it's just painting over <laughs> and then trying, you know, I, I do, like I said, like almost any one of these paintings, if you x-rayed it, you'd see, you know, a novel's worth of different paintings, but, but I, I do like to do it. Uh, it's, it's something very satisfying about there's no pressure, like, you know, nobody's waiting for a painting of mine. If I happen to make a good one and, it, and someone likes it, that's great, but there's no pressure or anything. So it's nice. Um, if you do more of those, uh, the white tree with the cardinal in it was just, that wowed me. Do more of those so I can buy one. So. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, um, if you want, um, we can, you can Facebook friend me or something like that. Um, do, I'll do that because I was I was actually doing something on Facebook and your name popped up and so I was oh. reading about you and then I was like oh yeah the the reading is tonight so I wasn't making those connections in my brain but so glad you you came are, well they're so exciting they're very exciting paintings so well, thank you, you so much <laughs> and and I am making I'm I, I even as we speak I have another black background with a white tree and i haven't figured out what kind of bird or animal will be in it but you'll see it if you if you look at my stuff so thank you yes thank you. do you have a book coming out with your paintings no why not i, I think what we need to do is is speak to gloria yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't I don't know how to do that but i could learn um you know and i have to ditto what bg said i have some artist friends i i would love to show your work too so this video is great uh because uh your work is so amazing and that and i also love that tree when i first saw that i had i'm glad i got to put that on the flyer but seeing it tonight i could see it more clearly you know bigger for my eyes <laughs> and yes. it's just stunning all of them I, I just love it it's the type of work I like the best so really congratulations on it all <laughs> thank you thank you Gloria I appreciate that um I'm going to definitely connect you with with my artist friend um Judy Ferrara unless you already know her um she made she wanted to have a book of her paintings and so what she did was she made it possible that you could slide them out and put oh. one in a frame and then, ha you know, you could alternate them. And it, because wow. that was the only way she could really afford to do it because yes. it's very expensive to print oh, a book. Yeah. With full so, and everything. Yeah, yeah. So somehow I'm going to connect you too. <laughs> I appreciate she, that. Yeah. She could really love your art she really would so so oh. i will i will facebook friend you so okay great thank you you know the poetry of marjorie maddox no okay well she's published about 20 books or something but she just uh recently last year came out with a uh, a book with her poems and her daughter her daughter's an artist and her daughter's paintings now see who published that because they obviously publish poetry and uh, art. Yeah, yeah. If I can, if I could do that, that would be a dream. Like to have you know on one page the painting and then a, a poem right. on on the facing page. Um, I, I do think something would be lost if it had to be black and white. So the and I know color yeah. is really, <laughs> color is very expensive. So um, well, it's not you know. Black and white is not all bad. Uh, I have 26 photos. Oh. A lot of them oh, are... Photo, black and white photos I love. but And a lot of them are 100 years old, but in my book. And people, you know, love the photos. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. I think they love any illustration that yeah. goes to the poem. I just, I just think color is such an essential aspect of my paintings um, that... Oh, it, sure, definitely, yeah. But, but I love I like black and white. Her book is in color. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, it, I, I I appreciate the urging on of this. I that would be a great. Well, project. You're so good. You got to you, you got to accept that fact. You have a great deal of talent. Thank you. I. I'll say no more, but thank you. That, I, that means a lot to me, obviously. Um, 
Well, oh, there's a hand raise there. Yeah, I, I have a question. Have you heard about uh, Haiga when uh, the poem, short poem, is combined with paintings? With painting? Uh, Japanese style. Because oh, Japanese your, style. Yeah, your trees uh, kind of correspond uh, to the brevity of uh, the language uh, uh, of uh, uh, hi Haiga art. Oh, okay. I, I'll have to look into that. Um, uh, I'm not really familiar with it. No. Uh -huh. um, I, lo I love I love Japanese paintings. I love the, the delicacy and the, the dimension of Japanese painting. Um, um, and I know there's a lot of ekphrastic paint poetry out there, uh, poetry about paintings. Um, but but that's not something I'm familiar with. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay, let's give another big, huge applause for Stephen. <laughs> Oh, you guys are you guys are great. I, I, you know, you could be doing so many other things on a on a Wednesday night. Thank you for for showing up here, and Gloria, thank you for having me. I I really appreciate it. You're you're a treasure in the publishing world, and and you know that. Uh, and not to <laughs> mention you. a great poet yourself. So it's a nice nice combination, and you you're doing a lot for for the the artistic you know uh, culture. So. Yeah. Ditto. Thank you. And you know, you always have a home with Chervena, so. <laughs> That's wonderful to know. Thank you. Um, and, and I saw in the chat a few other friends who uh, I didn't see their faces. Thank you for coming. Um, uh, Catherine and Lou and, and yeah, everybody. Thanks. Have a great night. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see each other on in some kind of social media uh, and, and keep the conversation going and share work and stuff like that. Okay. All right, then. Thank you, and good night, everybody. And yay, Stephen. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Very nice. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.